welcome to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Monday, May 6. Two Middle Eastern leaders visit China this week. The border dispute between China and India seem to be resolved, with both sides pulling their troops. And Chinese farmers arrested for selling sick pigs as grocery meat. Just as the U.S. begins a pivot to the Asia-Pacific region, China is turning its gaze to the Middle East. This week, both leaders from Israel and the Palestinian Authority are in China. They're not expected to meet while on their trip, but China has offered to facilitate a meeting. Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu are both in China for talks with Xi Jinping this week. However, they will not be meeting with the Chinese leader at the same time. Abbas met with Xi earlier today in Beijing, while Netanyahu will meet with him later in the week. It is expected that the two rival leaders will not meet each other while in China. According to Abbas, discussion focused mainly on the obstacles blocking Palestinian-Israeli talks and what, if anything, China could do. Meanwhile, Netanyahu is expected to sign a series of trade deals with China during his visit to Shanghai. This is the first time in six years that an Israeli leader has visited China. Diplomatic relations between the two countries started in 1992. Even before that, though, China recognized the state of Palestine in 1988 and was one of the first countries to set up an embassy in its capital. Iran will also be an issue on the table. China is the largest importer of Iranian oil and has been a roadblock to Western sanctions on Tehran. That could give China unusual leverage on an issue that greatly concerns Israel, Iranian nuclear development. Another point of contention is Israel's involvement in Syria's civil war. Netanyahu's visit to Shanghai was delayed over Israeli airstrikes on Syria over the weekend. China's foreign ministry voices disapproval of the strikes, reiterating its mantra of non-interference. China's foreign ministry has expressed willingness to set up a meeting between the two leaders during their time in China. Analysts say it's a sign that China wants a more proactive role in the Middle East. It also might prove that reconciliation between the two sides might not hinge on American diplomacy. India and China have agreed to withdraw troops from a tense standoff on their border. The agreement was made on Sunday ahead of the Indian foreign minister's visit to China. On April 15, a few dozen soldiers from the People's Liberation Army set up camp on the border. The boundary region is the site of ongoing problems as the actual border is not clearly defined. India said the Chinese soldiers had come 12 miles into Indian territory, calling it the worst incursion in years. The Chinese regime denied the claims, saying it was doing a routine border check. Now both sides have agreed to withdraw, but the result is still unclear. India reports that its troops have moved about half a mile back. An Indian officer on the front line said it is unclear how far back the Chinese troops have moved. And this next story is not for those with a weak stomach. Three Chinese farmers in southern Fujian province were contracted to dispose of pigs that had died of disease, and they did just not in the way you would hope. They disposed of the pigs by selling the carcasses as grocery meat. A report by state-run Global Times said they made about $490,000 from the diseased meat. According to investigators, the pigs tested positive for a pseudo-rabies virus that is actually more closely related to herpes than rabies. The pigs also tested positive for blue year disease, which state media say is likely the cause of death. A truck driver and guard hired by the farmers is also in custody. Three butchers believed to have been involved are still at large. And the diseased pigs selling on Chinese markets follows news last week that some businesses were using meat, including rat meat, to pass off as mutton meat. Chinese authorities have been trying to deal with food safety issues for years, but it seems they just keep discovering these scandals. One million dollars worth of rat meat. That's how much money was involved in turning rat, fox and minx meat into mutton. And the latest scandal is just a drop in the bucket. This year alone, authorities have made 904 tainted food arrests, and now officials are saying they've had enough. Judicial authorities said on Friday that people who commit food safety crimes can expect harsh punishment from the courts. When a criminal commits several crimes, the penalty for the most severe crime should be imposed, instead of one imposed at random or sometimes a light one out of considerations for some specific factors. This is absolutely not allowed now, and this is very clear. The number of poisonous food cases tried by Chinese courts has exploded. 
In 2010, 80 cases were tried. By 2012, that number shot up to 861. In 2008, six children died and 300,000 became ill due to infant formula being tainted with melamine. Tainted foods have been a persistent problem in China. Despite a growing lack of public confidence, problems with tainted or diseased pork, gutter cooking oil, and a host of smaller scandals persist. And still ahead on NTD China News, Chinese exporters under scrutiny over March export figures. How Swedish car maker Volvo is doing under Chinese ownership, and Shen Yun Performing Arts puts on an enlightening show in Hawaii. And welcome back. China reported a surprising jump in exports for March. The figures immediately drew doubts, and now Chinese authorities say they're going to investigate if companies are overstating the exports in order to bring in foreign cash. China has finally acknowledged that its irregular export figures for March were a result of faked export data. Official figures showed a substantial increase in Chinese exports, but those figures clashed with data from other countries that reported a normal or declining rate of Chinese imports. Now authorities believe Chinese businesses were over-reporting their exports in an attempt to bring in more foreign currency, something tightly regulated by the government. China's State Administration on Foreign Exchange says it is cracking down on companies it suspects of fudging their export figures. Companies showing a discrepancy between its export numbers and actual goods will be investigated. If the companies cannot prove their transactions, they'll be placed on a blacklist and closely monitored. The overreporting could also affect China's overall growth figures for the first quarter. Economists speculate that the economy's year-on-year -year growth rate of 18 percent could be closer to 13 percent when true export figures are accounted for. In 2010, Chinese carmaker Geely purchased an iconic Swedish carmaker, Volvo. Almost three years on, how is Volvo doing now under new management? NTD's bureau in Sweden brings you this next story. Volvo, owned by Chinese company Geely, presented its annual report of 2012 at a press conference in Stockholm on Friday. And there was big interest in how Chinese-owned Volvo is doing. With economic uncertainty in Europe and around the world, the car industry has been in for tough times. Many manufacturers have been looking hopefully at the Chinese market as a way out. According to the report, Volvo managed to break even, which is also the expectation for next year. Volvo's total car sales amounted to 421,000 cars, of which 41,000 were sold in China in 2012. This is far below Geely's expectations of 400,000 cars in China alone. So while China was Volvo's biggest market in April this year, it is still far below expectations. Geely's chairman Li Shufu has announced that to boost sales in China, Volvo needs to be adapted for the Chinese market and become more luxurious. Cars. We need cars that are valuable, attractive to our customers and they should be a, a bit more higher in cost than, than an average car. Uh, also, some models have to be more luxury. I mean, if you look at cars uh, for executives, long uh, wheelbase sedans, they of course have to be much more uh, elegant inside and they should not resemble a Scandinavian family car. But establishing an internationally known brand in China is not without problems. With Geely's purchase of Volvo, three new factories situated in China came as a condition of the state-supported financing arrangement. Geely was giving a loan of 1.2 billion US dollars by the state-owned China Development Bank for the purchase of Volvo. I passed info duties. And at the end of the day, I think what I found out was the government imposed the so-called joint venture status on Geely and its a subsidiary of Volvo, and so uh, which probably eventually forced uh, the Shufu to accept uh, these uh, proposals that 
uh, would make those poor areas the locality of his production base. And you're right, I agree with you. Those uh, productions are scattered across the country and they are far away, frontier, nowhere, uh, close to nowhere places, which would make Julie's production logistically challenging and also call the question of uh, the government's uh, sincerity uh, with Julie's growth. A recent study from the research company Fathom shows that Geely is heavily subsidized by the Chinese regime and they might have other interests in Geely, such as foreign policy and technology transfer. We will uh, keep um, our technology in the Volvo Group. So, I mean, in our China operation, we will produce Volvo cars in, uh, in what we are now establishing uh, as a joint venture, and we will be very careful in the transferring the IP. The Volvo acquisition is the first time a Chinese company has bought an internationally known car manufacturer and the car industry is understandably following the issue with keen interest. Cecilia Samuelsson, NTD News, Stockholm, Sweden. Authorities said it was an earthquake drill. Thousands of police and security forces poured into Chengdu city in central Sichuan province on Saturday. It was the same day Chinese netizens had called for a massive environmental demonstration. Locals are opposing a petrochemical plant planned by state-run PetroChina. The plant is projected to produce 10 million tons of refined oil each year, but will also create a toxic product called paraxylene, or PX. Locals fear the plant could pollute the air and water. The plant site is also located in a region that's prone to earthquakes, the same zone where a massive tremor in 2008 killed at least 90,000 people. As authorities preemptively stopped the Chengdu protests, in neighboring Yunnan province, up to 2,000 people turned up in Kunming City, also to protest against an oil refinery. Pictures taken at the scene of the protest showed people wearing face masks and holding up signs saying no PX. The Chinese public has become more vocal in opposing environmentally damaging projects. Last year, in eastern China's Qidong City, protesters opposing a wastewater pipeline stormed the local government building and stripped the city's Communist Party chief half-naked. How do Chinese dance, art and music reconnect you to your true nature? Well, one physiotherapist from Honolulu in Hawaii explains after she saw a performance by Sheng Yun Performing Arts over the weekend. On the second day of shows in Honolulu, Hawaii, a physical therapist says Shen Yun Performing Arts enlightens the mind, brings harmony and reconnects people with their true nature. Li Ann Ueda is the founder of Physiotherapy Hospital and through her 20 years experience in physical therapy has a unique perspective on a person's physical and mental health. And it showed me more of the indigenous part of it. As, as a Hawaiian practitioner, I was able to um, really understand um, the connection between the heavens and the earth and even the fairies. And, and, and the ha, I know that every culture, every indigenous culture has that. She believes that Shen Yun enlightens the human mind, helping people recover their lost nature. Well, what it does is it enlightens the, the mind of the humans who are, are seeking spirituality. I think everyone is seeking for something. And that we were all born with spirit. We never lost it. Um, we, got, we got confused. And it is time to go back to our roots, to where we came from, so that we can continue to uh, live on this earth in, in love and in peace. She believes that Shen Yun can also have an impact on the decision makers of the world. Like the stories from the gentleman with the moon and <laughs> the fairies and the way that people are trying to bring it down. I think that there's so much similarities in every indigenous culture, not just Hawaiian. And so if you're doing this across the world, it could touch the lives of many people and um, hopefully open the hearts of not just people, but politicians, people who are making the big decisions in this world. The final stops on Chen Yun's 2013 world tour are Madison, Wisconsin, Chicago, Illinois and Syracuse, New York. NTD News, Honolulu, Hawaii. And that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more of our China content, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our YouTube channel, NTD on China. Coming up next is China Focus with Shelley Zhang. Stay tuned.